Hello and welcome to this Corgi Engine tutorial. I'm Renaud from Our Mountains and today I'm going to show you how you can add your own character to your scene. So right now I'm in the mountains demo scene and if I press play you'll see I get access to uh, the default character for this scene which is uh, this pig here that can shoot stuff and jump everywhere. And the reason for that is that in my level manager here I uh, have I have my level manager set up so that it instantiates characters and by default it instantiates the spine space big prefab. Uh, let's see how we can change that. So uh, if I want to use my newly created character and let's say it's the uh, retrocopter here uh, in my retro folder, all I can all I have to do really is uh, click on the retrocopter and drag it here and if I press play, I'm now playing as a powerful helicopter that can shoot in all directions and do stuff. So um, yeah, it's really as simple. And the reason why we have to let all level manager know that this character is all main character is because the level manager acts as a very central class in the Corgi engine. It's responsible for spawning your character, respawning it after it dies. It's responsible for knowing where it is at all times so that other classes can access it. We're going to see that in an instant. Um, and it's also responsible for knowing the points of entry uh, of your level and the checkpoints. So this class has to know who your character is within a potential high number of characters, you know, like in, in this one, I have this NPC character. It's not my main character. Uh, the cool thing is, um, before you had to really instantiate it. Uh, and in version 6.2 of the Corgi engine, I've introduced a new way of adding your character uh, to the level map. So let's say I want to use the retro Corgi. I'm just going to drag and drop it in the scene make sure it's visible. So uh, I don't know where it is right now, but yeah, there we go. So uh, I have this character and I want it to be used as the main character, but I don't want the level manager to instantiate it at least the first time I play the level. So to do that, I'm gonna here in scene characters, I'm gonna expand my array and I'm gonna drag and drop my character straight from the scene this time, uh, the retrocopter we dragged from the project. This time I'm dragging the retro Corgi from the scene into the level manager. And you see that if I press play, I'm now playing as my retro Corgi that was in the scene. It's the same one. It didn't uh, instantiate a new one. And it's just working like that. And so this is how it's done when you only have like one character. But if we switch to uh, a multiplayer scene, uh, such as the minimal four players scene, you'll see that uh, in our hierarchy here, we have a multiplayer level manager. Uh, the reason for that is that it, it does slightly different things. Um, and here we have our player prefabs. So uh, in a solo scene, you would only have a size of one. We have a size of four, but it's done exactly the same way. You drag and drop your characters here. And when you press play, instead of having one playable character, you have multiple playable characters. I'm not sure what the controls are on the keyboard, but you can see I'm trying to control more than, more than one character at once. The last thing I would like to show you is how to access your character from any script. So um, as an example, uh, we're going to create a script, a new one, and we're going to call it delayed, delayed jump. And we're going to open that. And here we go. So I'm going to remove that and I'm going to say I'm going to be using some classes from the Corgi engine and maybe some classes from tools. We'll see. Um, and so what I want this class to do is basically uh, it's a class I put on an empty object in the scene. It waits for a certain time 
and after that certain time it makes the character jump the main character the player character uh, and I'm not gonna drag and drop the player into that class that class is gonna go through the level manager to access it so um, first I'm gonna declare my delay so I can change that value from the inspector if I want to uh, then I'm gonna say uh, on start I'm gonna start a coroutine called uh, no, no, delay delay jump coroutine maybe and then um, I'm gonna declare my coroutine and in it I'm gonna say I'm gonna wait I'm gonna wait for the duration of the delay so it would be nice to cache that new wait for seconds for performance but uh, you get the idea and so now I want to access my character so I'm gonna go through my uh, level manager singleton so that would be uh, level manager on instance and then I'm gonna grab my array of players access the first one in this case if I was in multiplayer I would go through the array and do that for every character maybe um, and then I'm gonna uh, grab a reference to my correct jump. I'm doing that using uh, mm get component no lock. It's a way to uh, grab a grab a component without allocating generating uh, garbage. But you, you don't have to. You could you could grab that component the usual Unity way. Uh, it would work as well. And so now that I have my correct jump component, I can call uh, all of its public methods, really, but in this case, jump start. And I'm just going to save that. And it complains about the line endings, but really, we don't have time to fix that. So I'm just going to create a new empty object. I'm going to call that my uh, delayed jumper. And I'm just going to add my delayed jump inspector. Uh, component on it and now if I press play I'm just not going to touch anything on my keyboard or anywhere and yeah after three seconds we jump bit of a useless class but you get the idea and really from that you can get the, the player from the level managers uh, players array and from that array you can get uh, any of the players from the player you get what you get is a character and so from there you can get all of its abilities you can get all of its methods so there's a lot you can do using that uh, it's also a nice way of knowing where the main player is uh, by getting its, its transform and if you look at the classes throughout the engine you'll see that uh, quite a few of them communicate with the player in that way uh, I try to prefer having events uh, to communicate it's it's more agnostic and it's more universal but sometimes this is also a valid way of doing things uh, i hope you learned something new today and i'll see you in the next tutorial bye